is the hot zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. So Michael Yan uh, just came back to the United States after six years away. And uh, Michael, you and I both sort of uh, left our adopted countries to come back to the U.S. Uh, during this time. And I'm interested first to know your your first uh, impressions after getting back to the United States after being gone for so long. So what, what was the first thing that you noticed? Well, as you know, I came straight to Portland, which is you, you've been to Portland. And uh, I came to Portland for a reason. This is one of the epicenters of the problem with Antifa and BLM. And so I just came here and hit the ground running, you know, like I did in Iraq and Afghanistan and Thailand and Hong Kong and other places. And uh, and r my initial impression is uh, similar to the impression that I had on the news. On Saturday, uh, I was out with Proud Boys and Antifa and BLM separately. Well, Antifa and BLM are kind of combined, right? right. Uh, but uh, so I was out with – I went with Proud Boys first. That was – there was supposed to be possibly a huge rally – the news reported maybe 200 of them. I thought maybe 400. It wasn't that many, but it was more than I saw reported. They were very friendly. Proud Boys, you know, they're made out in the news to be very violent and this sort of thing and and um, and you know, racist and that sort of thing. But, you know, I'm, I've been a war correspondent for a long time. And and uh, so I, I know that generally speaking, you can flip a coin on whether or not the news is accurate, especially in this heated atmosphere and i didn't there was actually minorities out with proud boys there was blacks and hispanics and things like that and i felt quite welcome uh they didn't come across they were they were telling everybody to be peaceful they were very, very well armed uh they had you know the rifles and that sort of thing open carry and but they were quite peaceful they were just like you know don't bother journalists even if they if we know that they're our enemies our opponents mm -hmm. Just leave them alone. They were being very specific on the microphone. Leave all the journalists alone, even if they're, uh, even if they're people that we know and that don't like us and are going to report badly on us, which I thought was very smart. And yeah. also, you know, proud, proud boy leader, I think his name was Joe Biggs from Daytona. He, he, you know, he was saying right up on the microphone, clean up after yourself, leave, leave this park cleaner than, you know, when we leave here, it needs to be cleaner than when we arrived. And so that that's a smart thing, as you know, in the many protest hundreds that I've been to around the world in different countries. Anytime somebody leaves something dirtier than they came, that will be photographed and used against them big time. He was smart and uh, said, clean up the park, which they did. And right. so I didn't feel any danger with them, actually. So, I yeah, know you know, I think you have to I think everybody is starting to understand that. Anybody to the right of Karl Marx is going to be portrayed as Attila the Hun in the media. Yeah. And they would look uh, at him. They would probably start looking at Karl Marx as right wing right now. Yeah, uh, right. You know exactly. Yeah, because they're on, they're on the purity spiral. You know what they, I mean? They're, they would call Karl Marx a moderate, and anybody to the right of him would be a far right extremist. So uh, uh, Che Guevara would Che Guevara would be far boys, right for them. <laughs> yeah, when you look on the Proud Boys website, they're not. You know, the, 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 I don't see anything extremist on there. Um, no. they, they're just they it's sort of a, a, a natural reaction of uh, men who want to stand up against Antifa. And, and, and a lot of women. Have a, lot of their women. a lot of women. A lot of women, women out too. there. Uh, now, did, did you notice uh, how they were treated by the police? Uh, actually, I was just with the police today. And uh, I, I mean, I was there with them an uh, hour or so today out at their one of the precincts, North Precinct, I think it was. And um, and I asked them specifically about Proud Boys and the police were like, they're fine. They obey. They don't cause us any problems. Uh, in fact, they obey when we tell them to do something, they obey. And, you know, like they're very polite. Uh, they're not a problem. The problem is clearly Antifa BLM. Yeah. Uh, the police were straight up saying that was a group of police when I was at their area. And um so yeah, I mean that's that's from the police. That's from you know after I was with after I was with Proud Boy Saturday, there was then I went with BLM and Antifa out uh, in downtown Portland where I'm at right now, by the way, and uh, they were preaching genocide of white people. They were pre and they were very clear. 
up on the microphone right in front of the courthouse. You know, we're going to genocide white people. We're going to. To, that's what they're saying. They're saying, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about mass wave of arson, about committing massive wave of arson. Now, as you recall, in the last couple of weeks after these massive fires, some of which are still going apparently in California, um, you know, the, 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 the apologetic media is saying there is no proof that these fires were caused by BLM or Antifa. Well, I'm telling you, I was there physically with my own eyes and my camera running, and they were threatening mass arson attacks Saturday night. I was physically right. present. I don't need anybody's interpretation for that. I don't need uh, CNN or anything. If they say otherwise, they're absolutely lying or they're right. uninformed. Right. One of the other. Were they so, talking about what their plans were after the election if Donald Trump were to get reelected? Oh, tear this thing down, burn it down. They were very clear, very clear. They didn't. They didn't mince words, man. They were saying, I mean, the threats that they were making were terroristic threats. They're like, if we don't get what we want, we're going to burn it down. They were, they were saying, if we don't get what we want, uh, there's going to be uh, mass genocide against white people. They were right. saying that that's going to happen anyway. They were saying that's going to happen anyway. And who am wow. I to call them? Who am I to call them liars? Right? You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, when people announce their intention and then they actually go out, I mean, they they. Uh, last night, uh, a police, a female police officer was punched in the in the face. Uh, just last night, near here, or mm -hmm. near where I'm at right now, uh, they uh, recently uh, a man was uh, arrested on a, a gun and a knife charge, and they uh, took him in, released him. He went right out and killed two people with a knife. Right, yep. that happened in Portland, and you know, and just a few blocks from where I'm at, where I'm at right now, just as you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the Antifa guys came out, and or, uh, BLM or Antifa, and he shot a prayer group uh, gentleman in the chest, killed him, right? Yep. And then the guy who shot him was later premeditated by officers. Oh, it was a complete first yeah. degree murder. It Without was a obvious. doubt, he yeah, said it. Obvious. I know it was first degree because he said it was. He said it with his own mouth because he, he got interviewed by Vice, and he was right there. And I, I watched the interview. So the right. guy that committed the murder was saying, said what he what he intended to do. He was an First yeah. degree murder, totally. So yeah. this is the kind of people we're dealing with. Some of them are clearly are not afraid to die. Uh, they are terrorists. W what I will say is, I mean, and Antifa and BLM are wearing out their support base. So this is good for us. It's clear that their support base is diminishing. For instance, you may have noticed that big BLM fraud case that just broke with the guy stealing uh, or accused of stealing some, I don't know, $200,000. Dollar. $200,000 for suits or something. Yeah I, th yeah, I think it was a total of 400. I don't, I don't remember. It, it doesn't matter. I'm not tracking on the details because I've been out on the streets all day and talking right. with cops and everybody else here. So, uh, but anyway, bottom line is, is that fraud case and so many other things, the arsons, the murders, uh, you know, all these sorts of things are adding up and it's really hurting their support base. It's also hurting Joe Biden on election. Not that not that anybody loves not not that any of these groups like O'Biden because he's white for starters, and yeah. not to mention that you know he's clearly got some form of dementia. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, I think they're going to have a debate tonight, right? Uh, they are in just a few so, minutes. Uh, yeah, so and, uh, let me let me ask you just to to uh, contrast for me because you spent so much time at the riots in and the protests in Hong Kong. Uh, what's different about what you're seeing in Portland from what you were seeing in Hong Kong? Well, you know, I was six months in Hong Kong until the communists kicked me out, and they, which was on the news. You can, you know, web search my name and Hong Kong kicked out. You'll see like Time Magazine and others covered it. So um, uh, they weren't riots in Hong Kong. Those were clearly protests against the communist incursion, uh, China taking over Hong Kong, which they've now done. Right. So they weren't riots. Those were people fighting for their life, literally for their lives, for they don't want to be taken, you know, gone. You know, China is going to go, do a full Tibet on Hong yeah. Kong. That's clearly they didn't want to be doing. taken over. They were they were fighting yeah. for their country. Yeah. Imagine the United States starts taking over Canada. That's the situation that they're in, like physically taking over. Right. You know, except except, so, except aside, yeah. aside from the the philosophical reasons that justify or not what they're doing. What did you see from a tactical standpoint? Did you see any differences? Did you see any similarities be, uh, just on the ground? Well, in Hong Kong, generally the the freedom fighters in Hong Kong generally were not trying to 
hurt people. Some people were hurt now and then, but like I saw thousands of Molotov cocktails thrown in Hong Kong. You may remember my live streams. They would be landing literally all around me at times, very dangerous. And, uh, you know, like I feel the heat, you know, I'm wearing my flame retardant gear, but that's not necessarily going to save you, you know, and uh, but they weren't trying to actually hit anybody with them. Uh, and mostly in Hong Kong, when people caught on fire, it was people throwing them, caught themselves on fire. But they weren't trying to hit the police with them. There was a uh, there was a Molotov uh, cocktail thrown down the road here. Uh, what? Not it was about two weeks ago or something, right? Uh, less than two weeks. And they were clearly trying to hit the police. Right. So they're trying to actually you know, kill the police. If you hit somebody with a Molotov, there's a good chance you're going to, you're going to end up causing their death. Oh yeah. So, and so, uh, uh, you know, that's why the police have to be out there with fire extinguishers just to be here, you know? And Mm. so here, here they're extremely violent. They're committing murders. They're committing assassinations of just random people, you know? And, uh, like, you know, the prayer group, uh, gentleman who was shot in the chest and killed. I mean, it was just a random murder, you know? And, um, so they weren't doing that in Hong Kong. Yeah, I mean, they, they're, I didn't notice any uh, violence for the sake of violence and, um, you know, destru- destruction just for the sake of destruction. Like you say, they were, they were barricading themselves, trying to put barricades between themselves and the police, trying to protect themselves from the police. These guys are going out like they're LARPing and are seeking out the police every night, uh, going to the police precinct and trying to start it on fire. Uh, you didn't see them trying to burn buildings down in Hong Kong or anything like that. No, there was some building fire, but for instance, two, or one in particular that I saw was from a tear gas grenade. I was there when it happened. Mm-hmm. And it was police shot a tear gas grenade. It went back into this pharmacy and caught the pharmacy on fire. Was, uh, I mean, there was things like that, but they weren't caused by the... They were not... They were not um, there was one time actually unrelated to un, uh, there was one arson attack on a vacant building, as I recall, because they were looking mainland was going to put uh, uh, CCP virus victims in that in Hong Kong. And some of the pe- some of the people, you know, uh, they, they burned down that building to keep but it from happening. Was, but there was nobody in there. Yeah, there was no. So they were they were just like, what, the, what do you mean you're going to put your COVID people in Hong Kong? And they said, no, 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 we're not going to accept that, which <laughs> is understandable. <laughs> so how how would you uh, explain the reaction of the police in Hong Kong versus what you're seeing the police do here? Well, well, the police in Hong Kong were implements of Beijing. I mean, they're they're communist tools, and uh, they're very violent. Uh, you know, and so. Uh, uh, the, but they, deadly force was not being used against the police in Hong Kong, right? It was not being used. And so deadly force has been used against the police here, right? And right. as you know, when somebody throws Molotovs at you, last night a uh, police got hit and uh, got punched in the face, a uh, woman police officer, and, um, uh, you know, in, in different uh, situations here, they, you know, they throw bricks, they've, like the fire, one officer here told me they've had about 250 police casualties, and that's just a few blocks from where I'm at now. It's like four minute walk, right? right, right. Uh, and these are small blocks here. And so, uh, I mean, fireworks, commercial grade fireworks. I'm talking proper fireworks that will blow your head off if they hit you in the head and happen to explode at the right time, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Another police officer got hit in the head. Well, he had his helmet on. Got hit in the head with a with a, uh, a baseball, baseball bat. bat. Yeah, and, you know, it. listen, anybody who's played football with their helmet on knows that you can have the best helmet in the world. If you get hit in the head with a baseball bat, that can have life changing consequences. Uh, you know, and, and, and they just arrested that guy, I think, yesterday. Right. Yeah, it turns uh, out he's a Democratic operative or a son of a Democrat or something. I, <laughs> that, who, I'm sure everybody's very surprised by that. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, you know, this is killing the Democrats. I have never been anti. I'm from the South, right? I'm. I grew up in the South, filled with Democrats, right? So I've never been anti-Democrat my whole life because I grew up with. You know, there's many types of Democrats, of course. Sure. I grew up with them, and so I'm. And so you know, I you know, family, friends. That, but this year, after everything, you know, all the mass arsons and the murders and the 
uh, all these things, you know, supporting arson, supporting murder, Minneapolis, Atlanta, Los Angeles, San Francisco, here, Seattle. I'm done. I now am, I have no I have no positive feelings towards the Democratic Party at this point. Yeah. I mean, they what they have done is they have they have hugged terrorism to get into power. They have literally committed terrorism against the American people to regain power. They're like drug addicts for power, yeah. power and money. They're willing they're willing to murder Americans and burn down American literally burn down American cities to get money and power. They're terrorists. That's the agree. definition of mobsters and terrorists. Yeah, without a doubt. All right. Well, that's all the time we've got for today. Thank you, Michael Young. Who would have thought that a couple of war correspondents would have spent their year in 2020 here in the United States because this is where the the chaos is. Let's hope that uh, next year will be a little bit more peaceful, at least here in our country. Uh, thanks for being on with us. And I would like to have, have you on again once uh, the election comes. Thanks, Chuck. Anytime. You know how to reach me. All right, man. Talk to you later. Bye. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.